Well, hello. This is the well-known Reflecta movie scanner. And that movie scanner will take up reels of this size, which is about 13 centimeters. But if you have, like me, reels of a bigger size, or even still bigger, and there's no way you can digitize them other than first breaking up the length of film and dividing it over a couple of uh, smaller reels, which is a lot of hassle, of course. And that's why I made myself a device to be able to digitize it with, uh, with this tool, which is in fact a pretty good tool with a pretty good result. There are a lot of um, YouTube uh, films that will tell you that and there are also uh, some other YouTube films uh, of people who have made themselves a device for bigger reels but uh, at least this is my attempt well then this is my attempt for a device with uh, bigger uh, bigger reels and it's made out of wood and the more critical parts are made of oak and the simple thing is in this board I drilled some holes to fit the, the pads underneath here and I'll just simply line them up like this On the take-up side, I used a small DC motor, which is in the back, because I did find out that using the original shaft to drive this shaft wasn't really working uh, well. So therefore I used a dedicated DC motor with a gearbox, it's this one. And this is the outgoing shaft that goes through to here. And here at this side, I use a friction clutch that I took from an old movie projector. I also use a small bearing here to hold the end of the, the shaft so that everything is more stable. Then for the pulley on both sides that is I used a, a bearing with an internal diameter of eight millimeters in a in a housing uh, which makes it all very very stable and the pulley I also made myself and show you how I did that because these are in fact uh, big washers Big washers that I used. The, the inner two are uh, of course a bit smaller and with an 8 millimeter uh, hole and I just glued them together so that it ended up being a pulley. And with a with a bolt going uh, from from the back through the bearing and connected it here with, with the nut so that makes a very nice and smooth rotating pulley here at the other end you can see a bit better how the bearing looks like in the housing uh, it costed me about uh, 11 euros the set of two so it's not too bad Normally um, this shaft here is rotating very loose uh, that is why with uh, this side here I made a, a bit of a friction on here so that it just has a little bit of friction so that it is uh, moving a bit, bit smoother and doesn't jerk that much. 
and the way I did that is I used a small plastic pad maybe you can see it it's not that clear but in there there's a small plastic pad pressing against the the head of the bolt and just with a long wooden beam uh, I can apply some pressure on here I can make the, can make the pressure uh, more or less with uh, uh, turning or loosening these screws here but I made it such that it has just a little bit of friction that I don't get that jerky motion then you might have noticed already that there's a small black box here and in here there's a circuitry that can make one and a half volt out of five volts going in uh, this is a, a net adapter of, uh, of five volts so the five volt goes in here and with an electric circuitry using an LM317 and two uh, resistors I can uh, bring it down to one and a half volt and the one and a half volt uh, is what I found to be the best give the best uh, speed uh, on the motor um, but with a switch that's the switch the toggle the toggle switch and the toggle switch has three positions it had a has a mid position uh, which switches the, the the current off and it has a, a position where it feeds one and a half volt to the motor for normal uh, operation and another position where it supplies the five volt to the motor uh, which makes it run faster of course and that I can use to fast wind uh, the film when I'm done scanning okay I can show that how that works so in the downwards position I have approximately this speed and this is the perfect speed for the normal operation in the upper position it feeds the 5 volt and then I get a much faster speed which is perfect to rewind the the reel when I'm done scanning well I have to show you how it works in reality um, here's the film I want to digitize I uh, guided it through uh, the normal way uh, that, that you would do when the pickup spool would be here only the last bit it goes of course to the bigger uh, pickup spool and let's see switch it on switch on here switch the motor on and there it goes and this reel has just just enough friction to keep some uh, uh, moderate tension on the film you don't want to have the tension too high because otherwise it will pull on here too hard and get some jerking motion on the film and uh, that's not good but this like this it's perfect And here you can also see the working of the of the slip clutch. Um, I made two white markers here, and the one on the back is of the the outgoing shaft of the motor. So that are the rotations of the outgoing shaft of the motor. And on on here, this is what the slip clutch does, uh, which which drives the belt for the big reel. As you can see here, when the film jerks on this reel, it doesn't 
go spinning uncontrolled but it just had a nice break on it ever so slightly but just stopping it from uh, spinning too uncontrolled which maybe the film may jump out or ah, it just looks better like this <laughs> 